We've got some breaking news for you in terms of the pick for vice president uh, to pair up with Donald Trump on the ticket for Republicans. Let's bring in Chris Reyes. Uh, she is at the convention in Milwaukee, and she has more on this pick that's going to be on the ticket, Chris. That's right. I, I'm just going to read the words of Donald Trump posted on social media, picking his vice president uh, to be J.D. Vance, the senator from Ohio. Uh, on Truth Social, Trump said, after lengthy deliberation and thought and considering the tremendous talents of many others, I have decided that the person best suited to assume the position of vice president of the United States is Senator J.D. Vance of the great state of Ohio. You know, J.D. Vance, uh, very new to the political arena. Arena, a senator for only two years, but has really uh, raised his national profile as he's done the talk show circuits uh, with his best-selling book, uh, a memoir in 2016, The Hillbilly Elegy, uh, talking about his his upbringing in Ohio, in the Rust Belt, as part of a, a white working-class family. That book, that best-selling book, eventually became a movie in in 2020, and. He, J.D. Vance, once, once pretty critical of uh, Donald Trump and, and, and one of the most prominent names to call for the Republican Party to turn a page from Donald Trump. But we saw in recent months uh, Vance really taking a, a, a stand uh, beside Donald Trump. I, I think this is a crowd that's just starting to, uh, to hear of this nomination. So I'm just going to listen in for a second, Jacqueline. As we get a sense of the reaction uh, as this news is starting to come out about J.D. Vance, senator from Ohio, as the VP pick, I don't know if you can hear it, but this crowd is chanting J.D., 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 obviously in support of of that pick. So we'll, we'll learn more in the hours uh, coming up uh, about this young charismatic senator that is now on the ticket with Donald Trump and, and, and no doubt uh, we'll hear from him at this convention. We're going to work to bring more context uh, to him and his character and, and all of that as well, Chris. Uh, we, we heard the uh, Secretary of Homeland Security there talking about enhanced security, particularly at this convention that's happening right now. Uh, what can you tell us about that and, and, and about what's going on around you? I mean, this is probably the most secure bubble in this country right now. I can attest to that. We are staying just a couple blocks away from here. And I think to, to get to this location, I, I went through two or three uh, different security points. We're all carrying these badges, which took months to secure. And there are officers, thousands of them, uh, on the ground uh, from all levels, city, state, federal really guarding this place. And then you can just imagine what's happening behind the scenes and what's happening uh, just not to secure this venue, but really the, the security perimeter around Donald Trump, of course, uh, on the heels of that, that, uh, that shocking Saturday shooting in which he survived uh, uh, an assassination attempt. Chris, we've been checking in with you throughout the afternoon, and so we've caught various different moments with you, but maybe you can just bring us up to speed a little bit on the mood there, because yes, you can hear the cheering in the background right now, but there have been some, some quieter moments that you've witnessed as well. That's right. Uh, this convention opened with uh, the official striking of the gavel. There was a moment of silence to note what happened on Saturday. There was the singing of the national anthem, and then very quickly uh, the, some of the committee leadership uh, went on to, to go about committee uh, business, rules and regulation, regulations uh, surrounding this convention. And then what you're seeing right now behind me, lots of cheering. We're at peak enthusiasm, Jacqueline, as, as they're going about this live roll call and different representatives from all of the states officially pledging their votes to Donald Trump. And again, you're hearing 
a lot of that cheer, a lot of the representatives are really pledging these votes uh, with great enthusiasm. Some of them calling Donald Trump a great friend of theirs, uh, showing their pride to, to, to nominate Donald Trump uh, as president. And then what we'll wait to see is, is when he officially crosses the finish line at about the 1,200 delegate, delegates mark. Uh, there are about 2,500 delegates here, and, and Trump will get most of them. You know, as we know, having covered the, the run-up uh, to this nomination, that he didn't really have many contenders, with Nikki Haley being the last person standing and only getting a handful of delegates, uh, delegates uh, prompting her to, to, to step down uh, from the race. And, and so, again, what you're seeing here is uh, huge enthusiasm for the official nomination of Donald Trump. And Chris, just how far along are we, do you think, in that process? Because you're sort of watching by looking at the, at the seating. Can you walk us through that? Yeah, I'm going to pledge some ignorance here, Jacqueline, because it's literally happening as I'm talking to you. And I, they don't have any numbers posted anywhere uh, on these screens. Uh, all I'm seeing and hearing um, is a person who who is uh, es essentially administrating the roll call. And then I'm listening to each state representative pledge their votes to Donald Trump. Uh, again, state by state. but. Uh, I don't have the, the, the number of, of uh, All good. votes that have been pledged already. Yeah. But I, I can tell you, again, of the 2,500 delegates that are here, Donald Trump will get the bulk of those votes. And Chris, it, just if I can, um, because, you know, there's a lot going on in that room today, but also uh, there's a, a court case that uh, Donald Trump would be celebrating today as well. We might hear about that tonight when he, uh, you know, is in front of that crowd. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, we can't underscore how big of a day this is for this convention, not only because it's opening day, but because when Donald Trump shows up here today, if he does, that will be the first time that this crowd will see Donald Trump since Saturday's shooting. He will get a hero's welcome, no doubt. In addition to that, you have this decisive victory from today with the, uh, the judge from Florida dismissing that criminal case against Donald Trump involving uh, Donald Trump's handling of classified documents as he left office back in 2020. And that Trump appointed judge uh, declaring today that the appointment of Jack Smith as special counsel to that case was illegal. And so he's going to come to this crowd uh, with that victory, as well as the victory that he received recently with that Supreme Court decision, giving him presidential, presidential immunity for, for, for some of the decisions that he's made while in, in office. Uh, if you are witnessing right now behind me a lot of enthusiasm, I mean, it will, it will really break the ceiling when, when Donald Trump shows up here. Chris, thank you so much for the coverage at the convention and the context of what's happening uh, beyond that, as well as the breaking news there that uh, Donald Trump has named his running mate as J.D. Vance, the uh, senator of Ohio. Thanks so much for everything, Chris. It's Chris Reyes in Milwaukee.